There has been a clear cut uptick in eastern U.S. earthquakes as well as swarms in South Carolina and Puerto Rico. In fact, South Carolina is going through one of the biggest swarms in recent history. Not only that, but it seems like it's just part of a much larger situation taking place from Lake Michigan all the way to the eastern seaboard. This includes a rise in seismic activity in eastern Canada as well and also along the New Madrid fault line, which is now being said to be just as dangerous as the San Andreas fault line in the west coast and more than likely will be the site of another major eastern U.S. seismic event. Just the other day, we posted on these South Carolina earthquakes and briefly touched on the history of the Charleston earthquake. Although the technology today is much better when it comes to measuring earthquakes, over many years, scientists were able to determine that leading up to this 7.3 quake back in 1886 was a good three-week period of smaller earthquake swarms surrounding the area in which would be ground zero for one of the biggest quakes to ever strike the eastern half of the United States. Not only that, but it turns out that at this same time, we were going through a period of high solar activity. At that time, back in 1886, it was nearly impossible to know that the sun played a significant role on the Earth's crust, especially during CMEs and filament releases, which put a lot of stress on the Earth's magnetic field due to solar wind hitting the magnetic field at nearly a million miles per second. It's only been in the last few years that scientists have actually come to the conclusion that this type of force coming from the sun does in fact play a significant role in seismic activity. And with the technology we have today, we can now go back in time, specifically to that time frame where the St. Charles earthquake took place, and we can see that we were in a period of solar maximum. Shortly after that time period, as we approach the 1900s, we can see that the solar activity began to dip down to a lower number only to rise again in intervals that now put us in this time frame 2022 in another period of high solar activity. Not only that, but we are going to be in a consistent rise at least until 2025. Now taking all this information together, what that tells us is that for the next at least three and a half to four years, the stress on the Earth's magnetic field is going to be at some of its highest points. And based on the scientific data we have today between the sun and earthquakes, we can expect to see even more consistent stress in areas that are already prone to large earthquakes. That is exactly why the saying that not if, but when these earthquakes will take place is going to be our reality. We all know history tends to repeat itself, and when you add a bit of science into the equation, and you're able to look at past situations that line up perfectly with solar activity and large earthquakes, the only conclusion we can come to is that we need to be prepared for these types of situations. Now, you would like to think that because we are in an age of high technology, that a a lot of these problems would be solved by now. But the truth of the matter is the population is a lot higher than it used to be back in the 1800s. And unfortunately, even though we have a major fault line on the eastern half of the United States with the growing concern of earthquake swarms, most of the structures, even with all the advancements in how structures are built, a shallow large earthquake would be about a hundred times worse at the same magnitude around a 6.9 to 7.3 than the devastation caused back in 1886 in Charleston. Now, I want to be very clear about something. I'm not revealing this information to scare anybody. I'm doing this because I want people to be aware that this isn't just some theory out there. This is proven science that pretty much in every high solar activity time period, we have seen very large earthquakes at the weakest points of the Earth's crust. Not only that, but with the recent earthquake swarms, not just in Puerto Rico, but also South Carolina that are still going on today. If we take a quick look at our sun in current time, which I'm going to show you now, we not only have a giant filament that is making its way towards Earth facing, we just talked about what sun filaments are, we also have two significant sunspots that are also making their way into Earth facing. Now besides the different names such as sun filament and sunspots, both of them produce a very similar effect. The sunspots are where CMEs come from, coronal mass ejections, and that is what launches solar wind and solar particles at Earth at, at nearly a million kilometers a second. Now sun filaments are stretches of high arcing energy that lift off the sun. They show a darker color because they are a little bit cooler than the actual surface of the sun, which allows us to see them specifically on this SDO camera you're looking at now. But when these release, they release as like a band of solar plasma that then in turn is also traveling at hundreds of thousands, close to a million kilometers a second at Earth. And that is what eventually disrupts our magnetic field and in turn with new science causes earthquakes. So long story short, my friends, is we are 
are looking at the sun right now as it's moving into a higher rate of activity and the timing of this is what's significant the swarms going on in different parts of the world are the weakest points as of right now so if this sun filament does release off the sun which more than likely it will and it could be at any moment now that energy is going to affect whatever parts of the earth are facing the sun at the time of arrival usually 36 to 48 hours sometimes quicker but for the next four to five days we're going to have two significant sunspots one up here just to the north of the equator of the sun and one just to the south of the equator and then the sun filament wrapping around millions of miles long which covers the center to the bottom half of the sun we could be seeing a situation where all three of these can have a type of rapid fire effect and then in turn affecting our earth that includes cell phone service radio blackouts internet outages and I've also spoken to people who actually get physically affected by these situations now I know this could be a lot of information for some people to take in I highly recommend that you go back and re-watch this video and do a little research yourself on the difference between the sunspots and sun filaments and the different energies they produce but all in all what this does is affect the earth's magnetic field and as we've proven in this video that does in fact include triggering earthquakes in weaker parts of the earth's crust and it's absolutely something we need to be aware of my friends i want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video questions or concerns please leave down below and i will answer them to the best of my ability shout out to canada and i will see you all in the next video take care bye bye stop right there my friends if you have not already click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon click all and you will get all notifications from this channel and trust me you won't be disappointed